Hi everybody, this is Dan Stolbarger and welcome to this week's presentation of what we call our uh, Kafir Middle East Update. And I want to encourage you, if you're not a member of Kafir, to email me, make it short and sweet, dan at hgkafir, K-F-I-R dot com. Just say sign me up. You'll get a weekly link for YouTube, which you're watching right now, as well as a link for the PowerPoint that goes along with it. Just a reminder, get that PowerPoint. There's always more information on that than the YouTube report itself. Again, this is the week of July 27th. And as I said, if you're interested in joining, it's dan at hgkfir.com. We'll send you uh, not only those links, but we'll send you a weekly Bible reading schedule. We've got to be in the Word in these days, as well as a prayer list as well. So, let's jump right into the headlines for this week. Uh, interesting, always interesting, by the way, week in Israel. These headlines are taken from Israeli sources. Quote, the U.S. will forever remain the great Satan before and after the nuclear agreement because the resistance will defend its territory and this is a resistance against Zionism, period. Who's that? That's the head of Hezbollah. By the way, echoing exactly what the Ayatollah is saying in Iran. Despite the deal, America is still our enemy. Are you listening? Another headline. Uh, while he pushes the nuke deal through Congress, Obama is basically letting us know what's coming next. He's uh, weighing his options for the so-called peace breakthrough. And then the comment is, is that even if it involves moderate pressure on Israel. So this whole two-state solution, by the way, it's coming, so you better be prepared. Back to Obama again, uh, you gotta love this. Obama said that despite all the criticism of the deal, the Iranian deal that is, quote, I have not heard another argument that holds up against it. And he said, 99% of the world, 99% of the world thinks it's a good deal. Really? That's not what I'm hearing. How about you? Um, and then uh, John Kerry, course we've got to talk about our Secretary of State. He um, is indirectly conceding that the U.S. could defend Iran, let me get this right, could defend Iran's nuclear program against any kind of sabotage from the Israelis. So if the Israelis set out to do something to protect themselves, because what's being said, of course, is that we're going to wipe Israel off the map. If Israel does anything preemptive, we may find ourselves fighting or siding on the side of Iran against Israel. I don't know what side of the line you want to be on, but that's not the side of the line I want to be on. And then finally, a couple of days ago was Tisha B'Av. Tens of thousands of people were in the hotel. You probably haven't heard much about Tisha B'Av, but you've probably heard about the problems that took place on the Temple Mount and how Israel was being blamed for once again, you know, pushing so hard on the poor Palestinians and et cetera, et cetera. What you need to know is that according to the police, the protesters on top of the Temple Mount had stockpiled homemade explosives, firecrackers, wooden boards, rocks, and they've kept them inside the mosque with the intentions of attacking the thousands of Jews that were on the base of the Western Wall in their day of mourning on Tisha B'Av, the mourning of the destruction of both the first and second temples. And so again, Jordan, others are sort of coming down on Israel because of these rioters, that's what they were, that were being pushed back and held in the Alaska Mosque because of all this. 
Well, I want to kind of continue on with this because, as I've said before, we're looking at the what's next, and the what's next is going to be some kind of forced two-state solution. And I want you to once again, uh, yeah, it's going to be hard, we'll get back to Iran in a second, but I want you to understand what's really taking place. Get your head out of the sand. Let's be like the sons of Ishakar that understood what was going on and what we should do about it. So here's what's happening. This is the so-called peace partner, the Palestinian Authority. On Tisha B'Av, the Jews mourn the destruction of the first and second temples in Jerusalem. However, the Palestinian Authority denies that there ever was a temple, consistently referring to Solomon's temple as the so-called alleged Jewish temple. And moreover, the PA also teaches its people that there was never any kind of Jewish history in Jerusalem. I, I, I love, this is just unbelievable to me. Quote, the Palestinian Authority claims persistently that Israel is Judaizing Jerusalem. <laughs> Judaizing Jerusalem? You've got to be kidding me. And again, now listen to what they're saying. Palestinian Watch, uh, watch has documented Israel uh, is said to have falsified historical artifacts in order to prove a fake Jewish history in Jerusalem. They're destroying Palestinian and Islamic relics um, as signs of an Arab presence in the city. And then again, they're plotting to take over the Alaska Mosque. This happens about every other month, right? In order to rebuild the alleged temple in its stead. So that's sort of bad enough, but really why I'm so pessimistic about any real change is has more to do with the brainwashing of children. This is the problem. And this is, quote, what I call a recipe for hate and terror. Again, back to our friends at the Palestinian Media Watch. They've prepared a comprehensive report on Palestinian Authority education. It includes chapters on the names of schools. You know, they name their schools uh, after terrorists. Uh, the school activities they have, they take outings to visit the homes of these suicide bombers and people that have killed multitudes of innocent people. Shihads, right? Um, their school books their informal education, children reciting poems on kids' TV programs, quote, that the Jews are nothing more than monkeys and pigs, and that Tel Aviv itself is an, is an occupied Palestine. And then now there's chapters that give examples of how to honor Hitler. Now, we're talking about children, and this is truly the recipe of hate and terror. Well, back to this concept. I wanted on in this corner you have the Israelis, and this corner you have those friendly Palestinian Authority folks that we've just talked about. And now we have the pressure of the world. I've already talked about Obama saying that's my next goal, but it's not just Obama alone. The EU is now saying it will explore setting up a new international format to breathe life back into the stalled peace process between Israel and the Palestinians. Um, we've invested a lot as the EU in trying to revive the uh, Middle East peace process. The idea of an international support group is one that we will explore in the coming weeks. This is spoken by the EU Foreign Affairs Chief Frederica Morgarini. She goes on, she was the foreign Italian foreign minister. She says, you know, the torturous but ultimately successful Iran talks showed that even the toughest problems could be solved through diplomacy. Friends, this is what's coming next. Israel is going to be forced into a concession that will be seen as the peace process 
of a two-state solution. And then I just call this unbelievable, but I guess it, I, I guess it really is believable. But U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said in an interview last week that he was disturbed by the anti-U.S. hostility voiced by Iran's top leader after the nuclear deal was agreed upon last week. He said in a speech that the Iranian Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei uh, last Saturday vowing to defy America despite the deal with the world powers was, in his words, very troubling. And then he says, I don't know how to interpret it at this point in time. Can you hear in the background the chance of death to America, death to Israel? And he's saying, I don't know how to interpret all this right now, except um, maybe I should take it at face value. Kerry said this in an interview, and then quote, but I do know that oftentimes comments are made uh, publicly and things can evolve and they can mean different things. Uh, if it is the policy, however, again, in the background, death to America, we're going to wipe Israel off the map. How do you interpret that in a different way? But then he goes on, but if this is really what they're saying and meaning, by the way, they are saying it and they do mean it, it's very troubling. I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens. Unbelievable. This is the, the leader of the free world, our Secretary of State, saying, I'm not sure whether to believe this is kind of troubling. And what have we done? We have given them a weapon or the ability to have a weapon of mass destruction. And it doesn't end there. Now he's threatening Israel. Here's his latest threat. Because, of course, now all this deal is now in Congress. So he says, Kerry, I fear that what could happen is that if Congress were to overturn this deal, our friends in Israel could actually wind up being more isolated and more blamed. And we would lose Europe and China and Russia with respect to whatever military action we might have to take because we've turned our backs on a very legitimate program that allows us to put their program to the test over the next few years. We're, it, so if Congress overturns this, who are we going to blame? Not our Congress. We're going to blame Israel. And we're going to say, if this happens, you're even going to be more isolated and all the blame is going to be on you. You know, it will be in the last days, and I'm afraid that we're entering into these days right now, that Israel will stand alone. So I look at this and I say, as crazy as it sounds, it's more than just a possibility. Well, I'm going to wrap this up. A couple things. Let's just take a quick look at what's really wrong with this deal. Number one, you have to understand that, it, you know, it's the end game. Iran doesn't just want a bomb. They don't care about just one year. Ten years from now, this setup that we're giving them will give them the ability to have an arsenal of nuclear weapons. In ten years, it's not going to just be one bomb. They will have an arsenal. The second thing, this whole idea of an inspection period is beyond lax. Did you know? You know, you probably heard about the 24-day period and all that. It, it's worse than that. There's an eight-person committee that's set up that is to negotiate any questions before it would even get to that. This committee, and by the way, Iranians are part of this committee. They, in a sense, have to be... They, the, the concerns come to them first, then they have a waiting period to see if these claims are legitimate or not, and then if they claim they're legitimate, then and only then does this process of a 24-day period transpire that will then allow inspectors to be on the site. Uh, it's at least a month, if not a month and a half, and friends, a lot can happen in a month and a half. And then finally, this $150 billion that's given, how much of that do you really think is going to go for the, um, the real Iranian concerns of 
um, infrastructure and things such as that. 150 billion, believe me, there's a lot of hands up. Oh, I see that hand, Hezbollah. I see that hand, Hamas. I see that hand, uh, Assad. We need more inner ballistic missiles or whatever to supply. How much of that $150 billion is going to go to the Iranian people and their infrastructure, and how much is it going to go to funding worldwide terrorism? Think about it. Anyhow, wrap it up. Make sure you get the PDF. There's something at the end of it. You know, if you're a Kafir member, I gave you a kind of a speech from the Kafir. It's actually a battalion in Israel as well of infantry soldiers. And there's, uh, I think it's pretty cool to listen to the, um, the general speak to the, the, literally the kids for the first time. Take a look. And then, but here's the quote of the week. This is from a Christian pastor, Pastor Mark Biltz. Um, Many people around the world have been fed a lie, being victims of a massive propaganda hoax. The lie is that the Palestinians want freedom by having their own state. Actually, Israel knows full well that this can't possibly be about freedoms because Arabs in Israel have more freedom than Arabs anywhere else in the world. So if Palestinian leaders want a state, why do they spend so much time talking about killing Jews and glorifying those who do? What does glorifying murders have to do with getting your own state? Why do their schools teach their children that Israel has no right to exist and that they must be destroyed? People always talk about what they want. The Palestinian leaders are talking about erasing the Jewish state. That's why their leaders spend so much time demonizing Israel. They do not want peace. Well, that's our report for this week. Let me encourage you to wake up, take a look around. Don't be silent anymore. So hopefully if this has something to say to you, you'll pass it on. Hopefully you'll share with your friends what we're doing here with Kafir and you'll get them to sign up as well. Again, that's Dan at HGKFIR.com. God bless you and let's remember to pray for the peace of Jerusalem.